So in this video, we'll be looking at setting up a proportion to solve for a missing value. Just as a reminder, a proportion is two fractions that are equivalent. So notice one half is equal to or equivalent to two fourths, and three eighths is equal to or equivalent to nine twenty fourths. Okay, so for the first problem, it says John earns one dollar for selling four oranges. How much money will he make if he sells eight oranges? This is a simpler one. We can look at it and know that if he sells four oranges for a dollar, then we know he would sell eight oranges for twice as much, or two dollars. But we're going to use this one as an example to help us with the more difficult ones. So notice I set up the proportion three different ways. All I'm doing is taking the information they give me and putting it into the proportion. So notice we have the one dollar over the four oranges is equal to x, which is what we're trying to solve for, the amount for eight oranges, over eight, which is the eight oranges. When we set up a proportion, we can use the strategy cross, multiply, and divide to help us find a missing value. So how we do that is we cross multiply the two values we have. So in this case, it would be the one dollar times the eight, and one times eight is equal to eight. And then we would divide by the only value that's left. So in this case, we already used the one and the eight, so only thing left would be the four. So we have eight divided by four, is equal to 2. And just like we said, we know it would be $2. So notice the first one does work. Now let's check the second one. Notice it's set up a little differently from the first one. In this one, we have the $1 over the x, which is the value we're solving for, is equal to the 4 oranges over the 8 oranges. So we'll use cross multiply and divide again and see if we can still get the correct answer the second way. So first thing we do is the one times eight, which we know is equal to eight. And then we divide by the only remaining value, which in this case is once again four. Now we have eight divided by four is equal to two which once again we know is the correct answer. So notice the first and second ways both worked. We'll look at why in just a second, but let's look at the third one first. So I have the one dollar over the four oranges is equal to eight oranges over our missing value, which if it works correctly, once again, it should be two. So let's try it out. The first thing we do is cross multiply and then divide. So we have eight times four, which is equal to 32. And now we take this 32 and divide it by the only thing we have left, which in this case is a 1. So 32 divided by 1 is equal to 32. We know that's not correct. He's not selling the 8 oranges for $32. Okay, so the first two worked. We knew this one worked, and this one worked, and this one didn't. So the question is why? Well, if you look at how they're set up, notice for the first one, the units are lined across from one another. Or the oranges are lined across from the oranges. Notice for the second one, one of the units is located directly above the other unit. So the four oranges is on top of the eight oranges. Notice for the third one, though, they are not across from or on top of one another but instead they are diagonal. This is not good. In order for it to be a correct proportion, we need to line up the same unit either across from one another or one on top of the other. So now the first one we knew was pretty simple. We knew it was two before we even had to solve it using the proportion. But it, when it gets a little bit difficult like this one, the proportion will come in handy. So Joe runs one mile in six minutes. How far can Joe run in 15 minutes if he continues running at the same pace? What I like to do is just throw the information right in the proportion. So first thing I know, 
Joe runs one mile, and he runs that one mile in six minutes. Now, do they give me any more information? They do. They say, how far can Joe run in 15 minutes? So we know we're working with 15 minutes. Think about the last slide, the examples we went over. Remember, the same units have to be either across from one another or on top of one another. So since I can't put the minutes on top of one another, I'm going to put them across. So six minutes, 15 minutes across from that. So now that I have all the information they gave me thrown in there, I can put the X up there if I would like to. And since we already know what my unit's going to be, I can put in the miles as well. So now I can do cross, multiply, and divide. So first thing I need to do is multiply the two units across from one another. So 1 times the 15, which is equal to 15. Then I would divide by what I have left. Well, all I have left is the 6 minutes. So I would do 15 divided by 6 is equal to 2.5 miles. So I know that Joe can run 2.5 miles in 15 minutes. Okay, next one. Christian mows one and a half lawns with two-thirds of a tank of gas. How many lawns can Christian mow with two tanks of gas? Same thing I did before. I like to put the information in the proportion right away. So I know 1.5 lawns with two-thirds of a tank of gas. And I want to find out how many lawns with two tanks of gas. So remember, I have to line the same units across from one another. So I'll fill in my two tanks of gas. And I don't know how many lawns yet. Notice how I'm writing the full unit in my proportion. I do this to make sure it's organized and correct. So I would highly recommend you do the same thing. So next step, cross multiply and divide. First thing I have is 1.5 times 2. which is equal to 3, and then I divide by the only thing I have left, which in this case is the 2 thirds tank of gas. So I have 3 divided by 2 thirds is equal to 4.5 lawns.